Here we are again with another English test for you. This time with the movie Ratatouille. Get ready because we have 21 vocabulary questions for you to answer today. I'm sure you will. Excuse me. Hello, Ethan. Hey, man, how's it going? Oh, good. Yeah, I'm just filming a lesson here for the channel.、Uh, test your English with Ratatouille. You know. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Okay, so I should tell the viewers to subscribe to the channel because every week we put out videos to help them understand their favorite movies and TV series, right? And also test their English from time to time, correct? Uh huh. Without getting lost, yeah. Without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Got it. We'll do. Thanks, man. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Ethan, you know, I guess he's making sure I'm doing my job correctly here and well. So, yeah. I don't have to tell you again what I just shared with him, right? I think you got the idea and the message. So, please subscribe. Now, let's get started with the test. Gusto's restaurant is the toast of Paris. Booked five months in advance, and his dazzling ascent to the top of fine French cuisine has made his competitors envious. Which word is closest in meaning to the adjective dazzling? Popular, expensive, impressive. Dazzling refers to something that is extremely impressive or brilliant, often in a visually captivating way. Here are some examples. A dazzling performance leaves the audience impressed and captivated. Beyonce's concerts are known for their dazzling choreography and extravagant stage effects. Similarly, a dazzling fireworks display can light up the night sky with bursts of color and spectacle. Leaving people amazed. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't eat that! What's going on here? Turns out that funny smell was rat poison. Suddenly, Dad didn't think my talent was useless. What is the opposite of useless? Useful. If something is useless, it has no value or practical application. On the other hand, if something is useful, it is valuable and helps you do something well. For example, this computer is useless. I need to buy a new one. Knowing how to swim is a useful life skill to have. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. But to my dad, food is fuel. You get picky about what you put in the tank. Your engine is going to die. Now shut up and eat your garbage. If you are picky about something, you are careful, selective, thoughtful. Picky describes someone who is excessively selective or particular, often when it comes to choices or preferences. For example. In this context, a picky eater has very specific tastes and may refuse to eat certain foods based on texture, flavor, or appearance. The word picky can also be used in other situations to communicate this idea of being highly selective about something. In other words, it's hard to please a picky person because this person has very specific standards or preferences. Good food is like music you can taste, color you can smell. There is excellence all around you. You need only be aware to stop and savor it. Which person is savoring their wine? Savor means to fully enjoy or appreciate something. Often by taking the time to enjoy its taste, aroma, or other qualities, it involves experiencing something deeply and attentively, often with a sense of pleasure or satisfaction. For example, when you savor a delicious meal, you take your time to enjoy each bite, savoring the flavors and textures. Similarly, you might savor a beautiful sunset by pausing to admire its colors and appreciate the moment. 
Beyond just food or sensory experiences, you can also savor moments of success, love, or accomplishment by fully immersing yourself in the joy or contentment they bring. Rape cooking is not for the faint of heart. You must be imaginative, strong-hearted. You must try things that may not work. And you must not let anyone define your limits because of where you come from. You if something is not for the faint of heart, it is not challenging, easy, special. The expression not for the faint of heart is used to describe activities, situations or experiences that are challenging, demanding or intense, and that often require courage, resilience or strong nerves to do. For example, skydiving is not for the faint of heart. It requires bravery and a willingness to confront fear. Working in emergency medicine is not for the faint of heart. It involves high-pressure situations and quick decision-making. Starting a business from scratch is not for the faint of heart. It requires perseverance and resilience to overcome obstacles. Pure poetry. But it was not to last. Gusto's restaurant lost one of its five stars after a scathing review by Francis' top food critic, Anton Ego. If something is scathing, it is harsh, severe, unfair. Scathing describes something that is severely critical or harsh, often in terms of language or criticism. For example, the film received scathing reviews from critics, who criticized its poor acting and shallow storyline. The columnist wrote a scathing article exposing the company's unethical business practices and lack of accountability. If you are hungry, go up and look around, Remy. Why do you wait and mope? Well, I've just lost my family, all my friends, probably forever. To mope means to be attentive, to be sad, to be starving. Mope refers to someone who is sad, disinterested, or lacking in energy. It can also describe the act of being in a state of melancholy, typically characterized by a lack of motivation or enthusiasm. For example, after receiving the bad news, he spent the rest of the day moping around the house, unable to muster the energy to do anything. Stop moping and try to find something positive to focus on. She couldn't overcome her mopey mood after the breakup. Let me ask you something. When you watch one of our lessons here, like this one, for example, do you take notes like this on paper of vocabulary that you learn with us? I used to do that a lot, you know, back in the day. You see, uh, pages and pages of notes. But you know what? I have good news for you because you don't need to do this anymore. You know, you don't need to take lots and lots of notes to learn or remember or review the vocabulary we teach you in these lessons here. You know why? Because we have just released a new feature on the Real Life English app, the standalone flash deck cards for this very lesson. Instead of having to take a lot of notes, you can watch this lesson on the app and activate a deck of exclusive flashcards for you to practice all this vocabulary you're learning today. Isn't that cool? So join a select group of learners who use the Real Life app to expand their active vocabulary. To claim your flashcards for this lesson, just download the app and follow the instructions. I'm sure you will love it. How can we claim to represent the name of Gusto if we don't uphold his most cherished belief? And what belief is that, Mademoiselle Tatou? Anyone can cook. To uphold a belief means to defy a belief, to support a belief, to challenge a belief. A 
Uphold means to support, maintain, or defend a principle, belief, or value. It involves ensuring that something remains intact or respected. In this context, they're talking about upholding Gusteau's belief that anyone can cook. Perhaps I have been a bit uh, harsh on our new garbage boy. <laughs> he has taken a bold risk, and we should reward that, as Chef Gusteau would have. If someone is bold, this person is brave, daring, confident. The three alternatives are correct. Bold can be defined as showing a willingness to take risks, to be daring, confident, and not afraid to stand out or make a statement. For example, she made a bold move by quitting her job to start her own business. His bold decision to speak up during the meeting impressed everyone. They think you might be a cook, but you know what I think, Linguini? I think you are a sneaky, overreaching little <gasps> rat! If someone is called overreaching, it means this person is not working hard enough, this person is trying to do more than they can manage, this person is lying to gain advantage. If you call someone overreaching, you're suggesting that they are trying to do too much or are extending themselves beyond reasonable limits. If somebody is being overly ambitious and trying to do more than they are expected to, they could be called overreaching. Keep in mind that this word has a negative connotation. It is used to criticize someone. For example, his overreaching attempt to manage three major projects simultaneously resulted in missed deadlines and poor quality work. Do you know what would happen to us if anyone knew we had a rat in our kitchen? They'd close us down. Our reputation is hanging by a thread as it is. If something is hanging by a thread, it could start at any moment. It could collapse at any moment. It could get better at any moment. When we say something is hanging by a thread, it means that it's in a very fragile or unstable situation. If that thread breaks, everything might fall apart. In other words, failure could happen at any moment. For example, the company's financial situation was hanging by a thread when they found a rich investor to back the project. Idiot! I knew this would happen! I let him rat into my place and tell him what's mine is his! Egg's gone! Stupid! He's stolen food and hit the road! What did I expect? The expression to hit the road means to rob, to leave, to cook. Hit the road is an idiomatic expression that means to leave or depart, especially on a journey or trip. It's often used informally to indicate that it's time to start traveling or to begin a journey. But you can also use it like we saw in the clip, to say that somebody has gone away. For example, I wish I could stay longer, but we need to hit the road now if we want to arrive home early. We just need to work out a system so that I do what you want in a way that doesn't look like I'm being controlled by a tiny rat chef. Oh, would you listen to me? I'm insane, I'm insane, I'm insane! A refrigerator talking to a rat! Linguini? The phrase, I will never pull this off, could be rephrased as, I will never work in a gourmet restaurant. I will never cook again. I will never make this work. To pull something off means to succeed at doing something which seems too difficult to be achieved. If you pull something off, you manage to do something well, even though the situation might not be so favorable. For example, even though she started singing only as an adult, her debut album was a hit success. I can't believe she was able to pull it off. But still I'm here. 
How did this happen? <laughs> because, well, because you, uh... How because I am the toughest cook in this kitchen. I have worked too hard for too long to get here, and I am not going to jeopardize it for some garbage boy who got lucky. Got it? <laughs> if you jeopardize something, you make it happen, you put it in danger, you take care of it. Jeopardize means to put something at risk or in danger of being harmed or lost. It's like when you do something that could make a situation worse or cause a problem. For example, leaving your homework until the last minute might jeopardize your chances of getting a good grade. The deadline in the will expires in less than a month! Suddenly some boy arrives with a letter from his recently deceased mother claiming Gusto is his father. Deceased means declared, alive, dead. Deceased is an adjective used to describe someone who has died. It is often used in formal or official contexts to refer to someone who has passed away. For example, the deceased person's family gathered to mourn their loss at the funeral. Then what are you worried about? If he works here, you'll be able to keep an eye on him while I do a little digging. Find out how much of this is real. I will need you to collect some DNA samples from the boy. The phrase to do a little digging means to investigate, to test, to locate. To do a little digging, or to do some digging, is an idiom that means to conduct thorough or complete research or investigation into a particular topic or issue, often involving gathering information or uncovering facts that are not so evident. For example, I need to do some digging to find out more about the company's financial history before making a decision to invest. Here may be. Mark my words, the whole thing is highly suspect. He knows something. The phrase, mark my words, could be rephrased as, don't listen to me at all. I really believe in what I'm saying. Remember what I am about to tell you. You can say, mark my words, when you want the other person to remember something you're about to say. By saying this, you show that what you are about to say is important and relevant, and the other person should listen closely. For example, mark my words, if you don't work on your communication skills, you won't get very far professionally. No, I know for sure. He changes the story every time you ask him. I defrauded a major corporation. I robbed the second largest bank in France using only a ballpoint pen. A similar word to defraud is to mislead, to close, to start a business. To defraud means to illegally obtain money or property from someone by deceiving them or using fraudulent methods. It involves intentionally misleading or tricking someone for personal gain. For example, he defrauded investors out of millions of dollars by promising high returns on fake investment opportunities. <laughs> what do I tell them? Well, what did you tell them? I told them I would ask. What are you blathering about? Customers are asking, but it's new. What should I tell them? To blather about something means to stop talking about something, to talk continuously about something, to talk about something carefully. To blather about is an informal expression that means to talk continuously and often without much substance. If someone blathers about something, this person speaks in a rambling, foolish, or meaningless manner. For example, during the meeting, he just blathered about unrelated topics, wasting everyone's time. And you look thin. Why is that? A shortage of food or a surplus of snobbery? <laughs> A shortage of something is a small quantity, 
a large quantity. If you say there is a shortage of something, you mean there is too little of something, or there isn't enough of something. This is a more advanced way to say this. For example, some people believe there is a shortage of jobs, but I believe there is a shortage of qualified people. Dad, you look thin. Why is that? A shortage of food or a surplus of snobbery? <laughs> a surplus of something is a small quantity, a large quantity. Nice, right? A surplus of something is the opposite of a shortage of something. When there is a surplus of something, there is too much of it, more than you need or want. For example, the dinner last night was great, but now there is a surplus of food and I don't know what to do with it. Alright, time for the results. If you got between 6 and 12 questions right, your vocabulary level could be around B2 or upper intermediate. Now, if you got between 7 and 14 questions right, your vocabulary level could be around C1 or advanced. Finally, if you got between 15 and 21 questions right, your vocabulary level could be around C2, proficient. A couple of things to keep in mind though. If you got most questions correctly but still feel like you need to improve your vocabulary, this might be because these words are already part of your passive vocabulary but not part of your active vocabulary. So work on actively using these words when you speak or write in English. Multiple choice questions tend to be easier to answer because you can answer correctly by elimination. Having the context in which the word is being used with the scenes makes it easier for you to deduce the meaning of some words, simply by observing the scene. And finally, this is an informal test, and our main purpose here is to teach you some more advanced words while having fun. This does not replace a proper proficiency exam. In order to assess your English level effectively, aside from vocabulary, you will need to be tested on other skills, such as speaking, writing, listening, and grammar. But now, let me give you the challenge for today. Pick three words from today's test and create sentences with them. Post your sentences in the comment section below because I'm curious to see them. Guys, great job! You've made it until the end of the lesson or test. You rock! Don't forget to like this video, share this video with a friend who's also learning English, and of course, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And if you want to keep learning English while having a ton of fun, Check out this lesson next. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye bye. Whose kung fu skills were the stuff of legend? He traveled the land in search of worthy foes. A foe is an adversary or an enemy, someone who opposes or is in conflict with another person or group. For example, every superhero has a formidable foe. Batman has the Joker, Superman has Lex Luthor, and Spider Man has Venom.